Welcome to Electron Online. In order to understand the catenary a little bit better, we're going to solve an example problem where we're given the length of the cable, in other words S, and we're given the sag H. And we're going to use some different values for the sag. Here they are. We're given a cable that has a length of 100 meters, which means that S is half of that, 50 meters, because S is the distance along the cable from the lowest point on the cable to the highest attached point. We're going to find the tension at the low point on the cable and the tension at the attach point on the cable for various values for H. Now, in order to solve for the tensions, we need to first solve for C, then we need to solve for Y, then we need to solve for X, and then we can solve for T sub naught and T. All right, let's go ahead and do this. First of all, to solve for C, here we have s squared minus a squared divided by 2h. So we have s is going to be 50 meters and h is going to be, in this case, 50 meters. So c is going to be 0. y is going to be h plus c, but since c is 0, y equals h. h is 50, so 50 meters. And notice when we have y divided by c, and y is 50 meters, and c is 0, that means we're finding the inverse hyperbolic cosine of an infinite number. That means that x is going to be 0. So in this case, x is going to be equal to 0. And that makes a lot of sense because the cable is 100 meters and the sag is 50 meters, that means the cable basically goes straight down and straight back up and the distance x should be 0. So we're not going to find T sub naught and T. Let's see here. Well, actually we could. T sub naught, if C is equal to zero, is going to be equal to zero. So there's no tension at the bottom of the cable, at the lowest point of the cable. And then T here, the tension is going to be equal to the weight per unit length, which was given as 10 newtons per meter. So 10 newtons per meter. And Y is going to be equal to 50 meters. Basically, that's 500 newtons, which means that each attach point simply holds the weight of the cable and no additional tension. So that makes actually a lot of sense. Now let's find the values for C, Y, X, and T sub naught and T for other values of sag that are more reasonable. You're not going to hang a cable straight down and straight up, but it was an interesting example. All right, let's now have a sag of 25 meters. So that means that we have 50 squared. 2500 minus 25 squared, that's minus 625, divided by 2 times h, that would be 50, divided by 50 equals, and we get 37.5, and of course that's in meters, and h plus c, well we have h plus this, that would be 62 and a half, 62.5 meters, which means that x is equal to y divided by c. So we have this divided by this, 62.5 divided by 37.5. We take the inverse hyperbolic cosine and multiply it times c, and c is 37.5. And that gives us 41.2 meters. That means half the span of the cable is 41.2. The whole span of the cable will be 82.4 meters for a cable that's 100 meters long. Tension at the lowest point is going to be the weight per unit length, which is 10 times C, 37.5, which is 375 newtons. And then the tension at the attached points is going to be the weight per unit length, which is 10 times y, and y is 62.5, so 625 newtons. All right, and that's how you go about finding those various values. Now let's go to a sag of 20 meters. So here we have 2500 minus 20 squared, which is 400, divided by 2 times 20, or divided by 40, and we get 52.5. And I'll leave the meters off, we'll just put in the numbers. Here we have y is this plus 20, which is 72.5. And then we have y divided by c, take the inverse hyperbolic cosine times c, 72.5 divided by 52.5, take the inverse hyperbolic cosine and multiply times 
52.5 and we get 44.5 I might as well be neat about it and put meters everywhere just all right now tension at the low point that'll be the weight per unit length times c which is 525 newtons and here we have the tension at the attach point which is the weight times y y is 72.5 so we get 725 newtons all right this is begin to be fun because it's now easy to go ahead and work out all these values when the sag in the cable is 10 meters we have 2500 minus 100 at 120 meters Again, remember that C is not an actual physical value down to the ground or anything like that. It's just an imaginary point, but it's a value needed to calculate everything else. So Y is H plus C, so we add 10 to that. That's 130 meters. And now we calculate X. That's 130. And we get 48 point... I'll use two decimal places, 6, 6 meters. And... The tension at the low point will be 10 times 120, which is 1,200 newtons. And you can see that as the, the sag in the cable becomes less, the tension at the low point begins to increase quite considerably here. And the tension at the attach point will be Y times that, or 1,300 newtons. What you also begin to see is that there becomes less and less difference between the tension at the low point in the cable and the tension at the attach point in the cable as the sag in the cable is decreased. And so, again, when you hang cables, you want to have enough sag there so you don't increase the tension too much within the cable. Let's now go down to a five meter sag. So we have 2,500 and that would be C. So now we have 247.5 meters. Y would be H plus C, that would be five added to that. That's 252.5 meters. Now we divide y divided by c. And so we get 49.67 meters. Now notice that the span of the cable is almost equal to the length of the cable as the sag diminishes. Now the tension here will be 10 times this or 2,475 newtons. And the tension at the end points, or the attached points, will be 2,525 newtons. And again, notice that the difference between those two tensions really starts diminishing as the sag in the cable becomes less and less. Now let's go to a sag of one meter. So this becomes 2,500. And we get 1,249.5 meters for C. Y will be H plus C, that would be... Well, plus one is 1,250.5 meters. We divide that by 1,249.5. And now we get 49.987 meters. I just have an extra decimal place. So you can see how it's getting really, really close to 50. The tension at the low point is now going to be very large. It's now going to be 12,495 newtons. And the tension at the attach point will be 12,505 newtons. Notice there is only 10 newtons difference between the tension at the low point and the tension at the high point. And now, finally, just to see what would happen, we'll go down to a sag of 0.1 meter, which is only 10 centimeters for a cable that's 100 meters long. And so we have 2,500, so we get 12,499.95 meters for C. And obviously that would be 12 and a half kilometers. This is not a real physical point on the cable. It's just an imaginary point to help us find the other values. Y would be that plus 0.1. So we get 12,500.05 meters. That. Now we find x. So we take that value and divided we get by 12, x equals 49.999998 meters. Notice that 
x is virtually equal to 50 meters. Notice now that we multiply this times 10, we get a force at the low point of 124,999.5 newtons, and the tension at the high point, the dash point, is going to be 125,500.5 newtons. Notice there's only a difference of one newton between the tension at the low point in the, in the cable and the tension at the attach point. So it gives you a very good feel for how to calculate the tensions in the cable after you've calculated C, Y, and X, after you've given, of course, what we call H and S. And that's how we do a problem like that.